I decided I would cut the grass. Now at the cottage, that's a very small job. There is not much grass. It just takes a few minutes. I had just started when all of a sudden, that moment, my life changed. What was that? that I feel awful. Look, just leave the moor where it is and go lie down. And you'll be okay in a few minutes. And why am I sweating so much? Well, I walked into the cottage and I laid on the couch. My buddy Jeff heard me come in and came out and said, What's wrong? I said, I, I don't feel good. I'm going to lie down for a minute. He said, You look really pale. I'll go finish cutting the grass for you. Well, I laid on that couch for approximately 60 seconds and I knew that I was in trouble. My symptoms were getting worse and worse. It felt like there was a cow sitting on my chest. Well, I arrived at the hospital. They were poking me and prodding me and, and then a very kind, gentle voice said to me, words you do not want to hear. John, you've had a major heart attack. I'm going to help you, but first, I need to know, do you want me to use extraordinary measures to keep you alive? What? Well, yeah, sure, like, I guess. Like, and off she went. Well, how bad is this? What kind of question is that? Am I going to even survive this? And what kind of an answer was that? Do I really want to be kept alive if, I, if I'm brain dead? I better talk to that doctor again. Oh, she's gone anyway. It's too late now. A few minutes later, something happened to me that I can't really describe, but I'll, I'll try. It was like something exploded inside of me. And I felt cold I have never felt before. My body started trembling. And I realized that I was dying. I spent a very uncomfortable night at St. Bonaventure Hospital. And at 9 o'clock in the morning, a team of specialists came in and said, Hindles first, get him into the OR, and they did an angiogram on me, where they found a blocked artery, a main artery in the heart. Now, I am still awake during this 40-minute operation. Kind of awake. And I could hear the doctor, they're talking to each other, and I could hear him say, uh, oh, that's, that's too small. Can I make that fit? <laughs> And then he said, no, no, give me a P13. And a few minutes later, he said, oh, that's perfect. And I was lying there thinking, perfect. Perfect's good. <laughs> <laughs> I had pains in my chest. I had pains in my heart so violent that it, every single time it happened scared me. You combine that with the worry, am I going to have another heart attack? I have my hands full dealing with my recovery. But in this book, and before I could leave the hospital, this cute little physiotherapist said to me, now I'm sure you want to know when you can have sex again. <laughs> I can barely breathe. <laughs> but I said, she said, well listen, it's on page 11. And as soon as you can go up two flights of stairs, 12 or more stairs, twice in a row, without breathing heavily, you're good to go. <laughs> well, when I came home from the hospital, I was supposed to do a 15-minute walk. I made it four houses to the stop sign, and I almost collapsed. 15 minutes wasn't going to happen. But every day, we have 12 stairs to go to our basement. <laughs> Every day I slowly went down those stairs just to see when I'd be ready. I didn't want to miss it. <laughs> I do know this. A heart attack can happen to anyone at any time. And if one like this happens to you, I know a lot of people want to know, will they recognize the symptoms? Trust me, if you 
you having a major heart attack like this one, you will recognize something's wrong. That sweating is unbelievable. The pains in your chest, not just your left arm, if either arm or your neck or your jaw starts feeling tight or numb, those are all signs that you're having a heart attack. I don't know why I had this heart attack, because I was not in one single risk category that they had. I don't know why I survived this, because a lot of people do not survive the type of heart attack I had. Maybe it was because I've got more work to do. Maybe it's as simple as my brand new grandson, Nicholas, somebody's got to show him how to throw a baseball properly. <laughs> Maybe it's because people close to me needed a wake-up call. Because I can tell you Jeff has made dramatic changes in his life because he's realized life is short. My other friends, close people, they're either exercising more, they quit smoking, they're eating better. Maybe I took one for the team, so other people didn't have to. At least, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Maybe it's as simple as I'm able to tell this story and share it with you. And thank you all for listening.